Hello everyone. Please excuse me because as always we had some technical difficulties. So I'm going to give you all a minute to come on in. Come on in. I'll give you all a few seconds. Even though y'all waited for me. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Come on in, y'all. We have a good show waiting for you tonight. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on. You like to dance. Yeah, dance. <laughs> That's my theme song. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. That's the new theme song. What are you going to say? Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> All right. So, today we have a great show for you because, of course, you are sitting here with two of Uptown's finest. Somerville. We're going to let them go first. <laughs> Somerville and, you know, the claim. But, you know. But we gonna, <laughs> it's all Uptown. That's right. So, it's all good. So, today we are sitting here with Rob the Governor. So, just tell everybody briefly a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Rob. They call me the Gov. Uh, as she said, you know, I'm from uh, Somerville, born and raised. Up in Germantown, you know. Um, I'm just here. I'm 50 you what? Hold on. Say no. <laughs> I just like to enjoy life. I'm 55 years old. Been through a lot of stuff in my life. Um, to where I never let it. It didn't get me down. So it makes me to be a better person, but we'll get into that. We're going to definitely get yeah. into that. Yeah. So, where did you get the name The Gov from? The people in the neighborhood. Really? Because I, at one time, they was calling me the mayor because I started doing, I want to say about, I want to, maybe about 10 years ago, I started doing a lot of stuff for the community, like, you know, even with Facebook, giving people birthday shout-outs, doing Christmas. I don't think I ever got one. Well, it's coming. Uh, yeah. In April. <laughs> Look out for it. That's right. It's coming. So, well, uh, let's start from the beginning then. So, because that's 10 years ago. So, let's start from the beginning. So, right. you said you grew up in Uptown. Mm -hmm. and no, Germantown. Oh, Germantown. Yes. Kind of like more Philly. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> you grew up in Germantown, Somerville specifically. Yes. And how was childhood and everything like that? Siblings? Oh, siblings? yeah. I got, um... Uh, six of us all together. Uh, but one of my brothers passed away. He's called him GQ Rick. Okay. He passed away about not too long, well, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'm the youngest of the six. I have two sisters and I got two other brothers left. Okay. Yeah. And what was growing up in Somerville like for you? Oh, it was amazing. You loved it? <laughs> yeah, we did so much. Um. I'm not gonna name names because I don't. I be forgetting people names. I don't want nobody to be upset. And I don't have no money. I'm not gonna name names because I don't. I be forgetting people names. I don't want nobody to be upset. And I don't have no money for nobody. <laughs> so if he named but, names allegedly, yeah, and but, I really don't have no money for y'all to sue me. But <laughs> no, nah, the crew of people I grew up with, I grew up with uh, some good dudes uh, and some ladies. Um, mm -hmm. We played uh, basketball at Lonnie Young. Was, it used to be called East Germantown Playground. Okay. And then they changed the name in like 81 to Lonnie Young Playground. Mm -hmm. uh, because he was actually an up-and-coming boxer. Um, he had passed away in, um, in a plane crash. Oh, okay. He was on his way to the Olympics in 1980. Dang. Yeah. I don't think I ever knew that. Yeah, 1980. That's how... Get educated on the show. Yeah, that's how That's how East Germantown became Lonnie Young Playground. Because he boxed um, Yeah, because he boxed in there. Which a lot of us took up boxing there. We played basketball down there. Um, growing up down there, growing up in uh, Somerville Park was, you know, you just had to learn to live the right way. Mm-hmm. Um, our old heads, they didn't play with us. They taught us, listen, um, 
If you're going to go play ball in hand, once you finish practicing basketball, you got to come down to the gym and learn how to box. Mm-hmm. It, we, taught, we was taught a lot from my old ways. I always, even came down to even when they used to game war, like, no matter what we're doing, yo, y'all go home. Mm-hmm. Yes, y'all go home. And, that, and that's how they played. Yeah. You know, so growing up, like, like I said, I experienced a lot. I uh, ran track, played basketball, um, used to pop willies up and down the street yeah. to show off for the girls, you know. <laughs> so when you say, like, the old heads taught you a lot, do you feel like you got a lot of um, knowledge and life from outside the home, inside the home, or both? I want to say both. hmm Because it's, like, some things, like, because of the age group, the age distance between my brothers and myself, mm-hmm. um, a lot of times they might have been off at college or, or my older, like my oldest brother was in service and two of my brothers was in college and my other sisters, they lived in Jersey. Okay. So I pretty much grew up with my cousin Rock, which is like more of my brother. So I learned a lot from inside the home. My mom, she was great. Okay. Um, May she rest in peace. You know, you know, my dad lived in Jersey. Still had a relationship with him. I'm going to just say it like this. I was truly blessed. You know, I have four parents. Okay. My mom, my biological mom, and my, and my dad. They split up. I think I was about three. My dad met my, my uh, I call her, I don't call her stepmom, I just say my second mom. Mm-hmm. Because I've been, she's been in my life since I was five. Okay. Um, and she still is. Good. And just like my stepfather, he still is in my life. Oh, you good. Know? Lucky you. Know, you. Yeah. My mom passed away in 99. My dad passed away in 2008. But with all that, like I still have my stepfather in my life. He's sickly, but I still got him in my life. And I still have my stepfather in my life. My second mom in my life. Okay. So how was it being the youngest of your siblings? Oh, I got everything. You got everything? (laughs) They spoiled me. Especially one of my sisters, Mm -hmm. um, Wanda. She she spoiled. They spoiled me. You still like, she still spoiled you a little? No. You still still a baby brother? I'm I'm just a baby brother. I ain't getting spoiled no more. Okay. That's over with. (laughs) <laughs> so, um, we just want to talk about, like, at some point, life did change for you. Yeah. And um, we just kind of want to know, like, I want you to bring that, you know, bring that out and just let us know, like, how did you get to the point of the change? Okay. Um, first, I know I mentioned my sister Wanda, my sister Val, my brother GQ Rick, that's the one that passed away, my, big bro- my oldest brother Ryan. And my other brother, Keith, Mm -hmm. they were so instrumental in my life as me growing up. Uh, Taught me a lot. I learned a lot from them. But as far as when my life started to change, you know, once I graduated high school, I didn't, my, my plan was to go to the service. Okay. But I started making that fast money. And those plans of going to the service in college kind of like went out the window. Mm-hmm. Like, so I started living the street life. Um, I was a drug dealer, you know. I sold so drugs. how old was it? Did you graduate high school? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this was after high school. Yeah. Okay. I graduated high school in 87. What school? Shout the school out. Oh, uh, Lincoln High. Lincoln! Rel, Rel Splitters. Lincoln, that's right. See that, that L? Yeah. I know some friends from Lincoln. <laughs> I'm yeah, Lincoln, next year. That's yes, right. I'm also at, uh, while we get into that, let me go to the. To this is your story. You yeah. take your time to tell it how you want to tell it. Um, I went through a life change and when, you know, like I said, I was, I was hustling out in the streets. And then, like they said, never, like a banana can't sell monkeys. I mean, a monkey can't sell bananas. Because <laughs> a got banana the, can't sell monkeys. Right. But you, okay. Well, I got to the point I became my own customer. Okay. You know, and I'm not ashamed to talk about this mm-hmm. because I know what God has brought me for. Mm-hmm. There's one thing about me, like I'm an open book. Mm-hmm. And I started smoking, 
smoking crack, snorting, snorting coke, mm -hmm. and drinking alcohol. Okay. And that basically took complete control of what I was doing. Right. Um, it took over. See, what a lot of people don't understand, the choice, people say it's a choice. And... They say, I'm sorry. Uh, they, I'm trying to turn this thing. Uh, they say it's a choice. Do you get that one choice? The one choice come in when you first try it. After that, after that, you uh, it becomes a disease, and where like then it becomes a need for you because it became a disease. Once you allow the the devil into your system like that, um. Everything about you just goes out the window. Once you allow the, the devil into your system like that, um, everything about you just goes out the window. Okay. Let um, me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Because it was something new, and I mean, we have morals and we know what's right and wrong. Right. Like, after the first time, like, trying this, did you say, like, maybe I don't want to do this again? Or, like, what was the thought process after, like, your first time trying any drug? Well, the first time I tried, as far as the crack, um, the ideal, you know, the ideal was, uh, Oh, I guess we can't say something. Uh, from Just from say, um, usage or something like that. I guess they want to restrict okay. us from saying certain things. All right. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Okay. Okay. From the uh, usage mm -hmm. of things, um, it became a type of disease that kind of like take control of you. Um, for the first time I done it was where I was like, wow, you know, this is something I don't want to do. Right. But that disease, it came a, came a crutch, it came a disease, and... I tried to fight it, but in fighting a disease, you need help. Okay. You know, just say, like, if you get a common cold, mm -hmm. if you get uh, you get an STD, it's a disease right. that you get and it has to be treated. Right. Um, a lot of people don't understand that. Some people say, oh, well, you shouldn't be doing that. Or they say, uh, you can stop if you want to. No, so with them type of diseases, like you see them. See those people out, K and A, um, and this this is really not by choice anymore. The you choice know, it's crazy. It's crazy when people say you can stop this if you want to because it's more things. This is this is what we can't say. Okay. But it's more things that you can um, that can be attractive to you. Right. That um, that can become a habit. That is eating. Yeah. It's um. Yeah. I mean, it's anything. It's, uh, Cigarettes, like anything. So just because it might be easy for somebody and that's not your thing of choice doesn't mean that it's going to be the same way for another person. Exactly. Right. So people need to just be a little bit mindful and understand that when it comes to things like that and the things that they say about people and things that they think that they can just automatically change. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's harder for, like I said, it's so many types of diseases that people think it's just easy for somebody to stop doing. Right. You know, from gambling to eating, eating I, I like to eat. you know, uh, just different things. Mm -hmm. And once you don't get that treatment that you need, it's hard, it's hard for you to stop. Right. You know, so I look at it in the, the, the crazy part. I didn't even think about this when we, when you asked me to come on the show. Mm -hmm. And for this date, mm -hmm. the day is actually the 24th. Right? Yes. December the 24th, 2009, is when I went into recovery. Really? December the 24th of this year will give me 15 years of... <laughs> nine, of if I everything. hit my clip button. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Congratulations. Yeah. So this year will give me... Yeah, December 24th... 15 years. Will give me 15 years of uninterrupted clean time. I haven't had nothing... Not even a cigarette. That's good. It's I'm proud of you. Yeah, thank you. I'm sure everybody, everybody is proud of this man. I'm telling y'all. Everybody is proud of him. 
That's why he's the governor. Because yes. everybody is proud of this man. So, like, what did family look like while you were going through this? Like, was family supportive? Uh, did they try to provide resources? Like, how was family? Were you a well, close-knit niche family? Yes. I, I turned my back on my family. See, a lot of people get this thing mixed up. Oh, your family turned their back on you. No. We as individuals turn our backs on our family. We got to understand, like, when we're doing what we're doing, we're not just doing it for ourselves. We're not making ourselves feel good. At the same time, we think we're making ourselves feel good, but at the same time, we're hurting our Your family, family members. members. You know, our family members used to seeing you a certain way and living a certain life, but now they look at you and you're not living that life no more. And it hurts them. Right. You know, and they still try to, they try their best to be there, but we do so much wrong to them where they're not sure. They, like, they may want to trust you, but it's going to be hard for them. Right. And, like, I didn't... One thing about my family, my family is close knit, my mom's side and my father's side. Um, and they didn't turn their back on me. Good. You know, they made sure I ate. They made sure of different things, you know. It was just me who wouldn't come around anymore. And then it was to the point where, you know, I had the sticky fingers. So mm. because of that what right. I wanted to use. Right. So I had the sticky fingers. So that's when my family members wasn't too sure about inviting me anywhere. Right. Which times I wouldn't have came anyway because I probably would have forgot about it because right. I was out there right. doing what I wanted to do. Um, so as far as though, they supported me through prayer. One thing about my family, they continue to pray for me. Uh, if they see me, one of my cousins, or and you know they see me out in the street, you know they will make sure I eat, or you know they come past the house, make sure you get something to eat, you know. Uh, even at one time, like my cousins, they you know, when I was living that life because I was like kind of like, not kind of like, I was homeless, right? You know I went through a homeless phase where you know sometimes my cousin would let me stay with them. You know, so I, I did have the resource and I had some very, very close friends that are, that even went through the process with me, mm -hmm. you know, to see the hurt on men faces that are mm -hmm. our friends, right? To see the hurt on their faces, more so like you're looking at a woman, you would think they would feel, but I seen it on a man. Um, it just was like, wow. These people care about you, but yeah. I didn't care about myself at the time. Yeah, it's understandable. I, you know what? When I was in my twenties, actually in my twenties, I had a friend that you know had a habit, and um, same same drug of choice. But when I like just being raised by my family, my grandma was the one who prayed for everybody right. in the street. She prayed for everybody, and my mom was the cook, so she cooked for everybody. Yeah, and she was a caregiver, so my mom. Everybody lived at our house. <laughs> Y'all know. Everybody lived. That's why I have all these sisters. Right. Besides my sister Terry. But everybody lived at our house. Everybody from the neighborhood lived at my house. All the kids. I, I, cousins. My house was the house everybody lived in. My mom took everybody in. So I think that's where I get my like genuine heart from is like my family. Mm -hmm. So um, in my 20s, I had a friend who she, you know, had habits. And, um. One day, she had sent her kids over with a note. And the note was like, she had wrote out this like long note. And it was like, she left it like two doors down. Yeah. And it was like, you know, she sent her kids over and was like, can I borrow some money? Something happened and all this other kind of stuff. And I'm a friend. Yeah. I'm not, what, what did you send me a note for? <laughs> I'm coming over. Right. So, <laughs> I go over her house. So, she like. Oh my God, I knew you was going to come over here. Then you shouldn't have wasted your time writing the note. <laughs> so I go over there. So I'm like, well, what's going on? Like, of course you can borrow the money. Like, what's right. going on? It was like something small, $40. I don't know. Here. So she was like, you know, she told me what happened. The kids, you know, was out the room. And she was like, the night before, she had went out with her sister, which her sister had habits. And she was like, her sister asked her for something. Now, my girlfriend used to have habits, but she had got herself together. She was mm -hmm. clean. She was good, whatever. So she said her sister asked her for some money to get something. She said she gave her sister the money. Yeah. She said her sister spent the whole amount of money that she gave, like $50. Yeah. And she wasn't supposed to spend that. She was only supposed to spend like 10 
Right. And she was like, um, her sister come back to the car like, oh, whatever. So she was like, I'm going to go to that guy and I'm going to get my money back. So she said she gets out the car, go to the guy who gave her sister the stuff and was like, my sister was not supposed to give you all that money. I need my money back. And he was like, ain't no refund on this. You got to go do what you got to go right. do with her, you know, whatever, whatever. So she was like, she was so upset because that was her last. Gotcha. And then that was kind of like what she was used to at the same time. So when you got to fight that temptation and then you upset and you emotional and you going through so much at the same time, she said she wound up, you know, doing it with her sister and I was like, you know, as a friend, I asked her because I didn't do any of that, you know? Yeah. And I just was like, well, how do you feel today? And I was like, do you feel like this is something that you want to continue to do? Or do you feel like it was something that happened and you want to get back on track and like you over? And she just basically was like, she she felt like it was just something that happened. Mm -hmm. Now, I know eventually, like, I don't know if it was like years later or I don't know if she hid it for a while. But eventually she did go back to the lifestyle, but I just pray that it wasn't because of that night. You know yeah. what I mean? Because she was doing good for years. So That's when things like that, where a lot of people relapse because they stop treating the part of the disease that's going on with them. Mm -hmm. So say, for instance, if you have same things like if you got an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. and you stop treating it, you can go back to the eating disorder. Mm -hmm. If you have an STD, if you stop treating the STD, it's going to come back over you. Right. You know, gambling. Everything, everything that you go through in life, it's you got to, it's got to be treated. Right. You know, and something, and that's how a lot of people uh, go backwards. Right. Because they stop treating, they stop the treatment because they think they heal. Right. You know, um, and this process for me, I can't speak for nobody else, but I speak for myself that I know every day is a struggle. Every day is a fight if I don't apply what I need to apply to help fight this disease. Right. And that's prayer, laughter. You know, I got an army of people around me that I can call and talk to on the phone. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and that's how I continue to stay vibrant. Mm -hmm. Because one thing people say, never say never. But see, when you got God in your life mm -hmm. and you walk with God, you ain't got to be holier than thou. That's mm -hmm. what a lot of people get mixed up. You ain't got to be holier than thou. I don't care what you call God, you call him Jesus Christ or Allah. If you got him in your life, there's nothing that can take that that part of your life, that part of the disease, it, it can't beat you. Right, absolutely. You know, because God is the one who helped you fight it to get to that far. But when people stop treating it, that's what happens. Yeah. So, and I know you have like children and stuff too. So how was your relationship with your children during this time? Oh, it was horrible. horrible. <laughs> it was horrible. Mm -hmm. You know, and I laughed. I don't want nobody to think I laughed about that. Right. I laughed because me and my kids talk about it to the day. And they bring up stuff. They start laughing. They make jokes about it. They make jokes. Yes, yes. Right. Our relationship today is like we all have a crazy bond. You know, um, one thing about my kids, all of them are proud of me. Um, and like I said, sometimes we talk about, like, you know, one of my daughters, it was funny. It was funny. I, Cause I would do uh, Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. You know, I do every year. I do Santa Claus for the kids, right? Mm -hmm. So one day I had posted. Wait one second. I'm sitting here with Black Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have ever thought I'd be sitting here with Black Santa? I'm yeah. sorry. That's all right. <laughs> so for the last five years, I dress up as Santa and I take toys. I, I was going to people's houses on Christmas Day. And then sometimes I go to the daycares and the schools. But anyway, I, one time I posted like Santa, you know, going to be out this year. And one of my daughters said, I'm glad you Santa now and you ain't the Grinch that stole Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and we just laughed because when I seen it, I said, no, she didn't. You right. know? And at first I got mad at it. Then I had to think about it. I can't be mad. This is how we talk to right. Joe Lex. So right. it it became it was literally really funny. Right. And we all laughed about it. 
Because I call my... Because I, I, I have um, five girls and one boy. Woo! I'm sorry. He was busy. I'm sorry. Six girls and one boy. He was busy. No, I have more than that, but three passed away. Oh, he was busy. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I called my son. I said, you know what? She did. So, when I told him, he started laughing. I said, that ain't funny. So, I called my other daughter. And she tried... My other daughter, she's like the one trying to explain everything. But then, got the thing about it, it was funny. Yeah. And, like, it literally is funny because a lot of things we do talk about to this day and we laugh about the stuff I did because they're so proud of the things that I'm doing now. You know what's crazy? It's, it's been times where, like, even now recently, I've, I've been on the phone, like, for the last week with a friend. Wow. I called this person a friend. Right. So, I've been on the phone that I thought that I would never forgive for something. Yeah. And it's like, you know, sometimes when time passes, the healing starts. And it just is what it is. Like, you can laugh about things that you never thought that mm-hmm. you would get through. Because I'm exactly. telling you, it's something, this per- I never thought that I would get through it. and I, <laughs> And I got through it. But, you know, let me just ask you, what do, what was the turning point for you? Because cause, cause I don't want to spend too much time back here because there's a whole lot that uh, we got to go through. So, uh, the, turn, the, turning point, the, turn point? the turning point the turning point for me, right? I'm going to share the story, right? Go ahead because, and take it home because here. And I sit back and laugh. And I know y'all want to laugh about this. It's, it's cool because to me, right now to me it's funny. I was um, over, she's like a play niece. Mm-hmm. I was over the house, and at the time, I really had nowhere to go, so I passed there. So, they asked me to put out the trash. Now, mind you, I'm in the house, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> so, and I had some stuff for me, mm-hmm. and I had my beer. Mm-hmm. So, I go outside. Now, it's a lot right here, and that's her backyard. Mm-hmm. So, I did my stuff, and I'm drunk. And something in my head said, you can jump over that fence. <laughs> <laughs> and I, now, the fence, I'm only 5'3". Mm-hmm. Now, I think the fence had to be one of the eight-foot fences. Oh, my God. And some said you can clear that fence. <laughs> and I believed it. Not clear it. <laughs> but listen, listen, no, listen. I literally, I believed it, right? <laughs> so I said, wait a minute. I got to get myself ready. So mm-hmm. I, I took one more, boom, and then I jumped I was at uh, 211 back in the day. Oh, my goodness. I jumped that, and I took a boom, and I was like, I'm ready now. I went to jump on it, and my hand got caught on the side of the fence, and I fell. My whole side of my face fell up, so I had to go to the hospital because I was bleeding like crazy. Mm-hmm. And this is how crazy, this is how God works, right? I went to the, now, I'm in North Philly, so you got Temple mm-hmm. and yeah, St. Joe's. Mm-hmm. And where I was at, they both were the same distance. So some said, you know, Temple always crowded, you're gonna be there all day. You went out St. Joe's, you went in and out, you can finish getting high. Mm-hmm. I went down there and after they stitched me up and all that, I was leaving. And I'm gonna show you how the, how God works. As I was leaving, I was on my way to go finish the now to numb the pain. And something just heard the voice said, enough is enough. Turn around, go back to 1611 Poplar Street. I said, what? Turn around, go back to 1611 Poplar Street. 1611 Poplar Street was a friend of mine's recovery house. Mm. But this is this is where it gets this is what I'm saying. About two years ago, I he his name is Darryl Robinson, I can say his name. He he runs he's the CEO, him and his wife Sherelle Robinson, of Everything Must Change. Okay. That's the recovery house I went to. But he also had a construction company. Sis, can you pin that everything must change recovery house? Can you pin that? So, um, he also had a construction company. So, two years, I want to say a year and a half to two years prior to that, I helped him paint that house. Mm. I helped him paint that house. And 
when that everything took place and I decided to walk back over there and knock on the door. And I'm saying to myself, I don't even know if he still got the place anymore. I don't know. I went and knocked on the door. Somebody answered the door. I asked down. I said, Down Robinson's owners? They said, Yeah. I said, Can you call him now and tell him little Rob needs some help? And so I'm about to get emotional. Mm -hmm. But, and they let me right in. And once they let me in, I was like, You know, this is it. Mm -hmm. Like, this is it. And when I got into the house, it was 30. Three other men in the house. Mm -hmm. I made 34. 33 men were from Baltimore. And these guys told me I would never make it. I'm like, what? Because you, you're trying to get clean in your same neighborhood. I said, well, I'm done. <clears throat> and I got to the point in my life, that's why I was like, I, I'm done. You mm -hmm. know? Um, I didn't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I heard that voice. I almost killed myself, you know, jumping over a fence. And I just sat, I, I stayed there. For the first seven days, every time somebody handed me a plate, I started crying. People couldn't figure out why is she crying. You know, at first I couldn't figure it out. But I was just crying tears of joy because I wasn't out in the street no more. Mm -hmm. It was just, you know, in the, each month, each day, Things just started getting better. Um, I think I was, I want to say, about 90 days. None of my family knew where I was at. None mm -hmm. of my friends, nobody. And so I finally called them and told them where I was at. Mm -hmm. And once I called them all and told them, what do you need? Where you at? We coming to check on you. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I need to get through this right now. You know, without y'all. We need to bring his clothes. Let's, so it was just, from there, it's just been like uphill. So that was just your first time going and the last time you had needed to go? No, it wasn't my first time. Going. Okay. Through that process of the years I was using, I think I've been in and out of recovery for about, I want to say, eight to nine years. Mm -hmm. Until, let's see, 2000, let's say 1995. So about 2009. That's when I but you know out. what? I think that it says a lot about a person who's going through that and still says, I'm going to tr at least try. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, even if you have to go back a million times, to me it's like a New Year's resolution. Yeah. And you know how people are always like, oh, if you make New Year's resolutions, every, I'm all for New Year's resolutions because you know why? I'm for weekly resolutions. Right. Like that's the whole point of life. You should always be constantly trying to evolve. Even if you're not successful, you got to keep on trying. You exactly. don't stop when you when, when something doesn't work for you. No. And that's, and that's where I was at. I just didn't stop like, I have my um again my second mom. Then I also have a a, a godmother, uh, Carlene. I have a godmother. You know they was there like, even though my mom wasn't living, in that process, but they was there when I was getting clean. Mm -hmm. You know the only thing my mom didn't get a chance to see is, my mom didn't get a chance to see this person. She didn't get the chance to see it in a physical form, but she still right. sees it. She, she sees knows it in a spiritual form. She knows it in a spiritual yeah. form, definitely. My, my father didn't get a chance to see the physical, but um, he see it spiritual. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes it hurts, you know, um, because sometimes I even sit back and like, I wish that, why couldn't I have been doing this when it was here? But it wasn't my time. It wasn't. You know, this wasn't written. God had everything written down for how he wants me to be. You ever heard the um, saying, if you ever want to make God laugh, tell him your plans? Exactly. So, it, it, I understand it. You know, being on the spiritual side, I understand it a lot. But at the same time, being on the non-spiritual side, it hurts a it lot. It hurts, right. You know, so, but I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Because I look around and see how many people that he's allowed me to touch. Now, I went through the process. I stayed in a recovery place for 22 months. Mm. Finally moved out, but I never disconnected. I became the director of the program. I was the van driver for the program. I was teaching groups. Um, 
just helping out. Also partner with One Day at a Time. Okay. Uh, oh, they call it ODAT. <clears throat> mm -hmm. One Day at a Time. So, Mel Wells, so that um, I was stay connected. And to this day, I'm still connected with them. You know, I may not be as more active with them because of my life started changing more and more to where I'm doing a lot in my community now. You know? A lot. <laughs> so this comes to the point where at one time, this goes into that, as my life started to change a lot, I just, you know, I got on Facebook and Started giving people birthday shout outs and And again he owes me one. <laughs> and then I started doing these Christmas tree uh contests. Okay. Right? What's the Christmas tree contest? Tell Christmas us about tree it. is um it was crazy because I went over a friend of my house, right? Mm -hmm. And she had a tree all decorated. So I took a picture of it. And then people started liking it. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to go to another friend's house, took a picture of that. Thing. I said, you know, we'll have a Christmas tree kind of. And next thing I know, I said, so I went on the book. I said, listen, we're having a Christmas tree. I'm having a Christmas tree contest. Uh, first prize, I think it was $25 or $50. Second prize was a gift. Third prize was a gift. Something for the home. Mm -hmm. And That's decent. That's decent. When you I did still that, do that? I haven't, I didn't do it last year. I'll probably do it this year. Okay. Um, get y'all, get y'all. Matter of fact, I, I definitely will be doing it this year because I don't think I'm gonna have time to do the Santa Claus thing. But I, I get, I'll tell you why I'm in. Okay. But it was, and so that happened. So people just started, and then I remember a lot of people birthdays, and, and they started calling me the mayor. And then one time, this girl wasn't anybody specific who started that name for you, because you gotta remember if it was. You gotta remember yes. Who was it? It was... We're going to say that person. We're going to say that person. <laughs> I can say that person. Uh -huh. It's a couple of them. They was all together. Uh, Stacy, Tina. Stacy and Tina. Mm -hmm. um, then, I forgot how I became... They call, Who started calling me the governor? I think it was Stacy and Tina. Because okay. they kept saying, no, you can't be the mayor. You do too much. You're the governor now. Mm -hmm. And that's where it came from. Um, then as it, when I got down North Philly, you know, when I go down North Philly to do ODAC and all that, Mel Wells started calling me the governor down there. Okay. So it just kind of like branched out like everywhere. So as times, people were like, yo, I know you from somewhere. I'm like, I'm like what's your name? I'm like, Rob. I'm like, no, that's not your name. I'm like, my name is Rob. No, what do they call you? They said, I said, the girl. That's who you are. Uh -huh. It's like, people don't know me by, a lot of people don't know me by Rob, they just know me by God. Right, right. Which is fine, you know, um, because, I, again, I owe all that to God. You know, he's allowed me to touch a lot of people's hearts, uh, mm -hmm. teaching these groups, uh, just being the help to other folks. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, even when I had, I think I had like two and a half years clean, my brother passed away. And the way... These guys surrounded me. I got to say their names. Go ahead. You can say, you can say anybody's name who's not going to sue me, Neil. Oh, no, no. As long as it ain't defamation no, of character, I, you can say their name. Go ahead. I, I, so these, these dudes, to this day, we have a group where we text each other every mm -hmm. every morning, all day long. They make sure I'm all right. I make sure they all right. Uh, they like my fence. I got some very close friends, like Big Ron, um, and the guys that I'm in a group with, the group chat with, is like my man uh, Mark. They call me Smooth. He was one of the best running backs, and you know through the tri-state area back in '85. Uh, my man Pig. He's one of the best DJs around. Mm -hmm. uh, then my man Gil. All three of us we're like brothers. And then you got uh, Little Gil, calling nephew, and Kev. Um, but these guys right there has been like incredible through these last, I want to say the last 13 years mm. of like the first two I wasn't too close. I mean, we would talk, 
but I was still shunning away from mm-hmm. people because I was still trying to get myself right. 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 Uh, but for the last 13 years, these guys have been so instrumental in, in my recovery that it's, it just, it's just crazy. You know, um, my god sister Kelly, my cousin Lisa, um, my cousin Donna, like my whole entire family, they just been, all of them been so instrumental. And that's why I want to name any name. So if I forget your name. This the just, award show right just, here. Just, a char- just charge it to, what does it say? Charge it to my heart, my heart and not my mind. Because mm-hmm. I'm over, I'm 55. Sometimes I forget. So forgive me. So. <laughs> that's fine. Um, but yeah, it just took, took, took place like that. And, and then like here I am today is where it's, it's, I'm at a part in my life now today where I never thought I would be. I'm happy to see you here. I I didn't meet you until the good part. Um, I mean, a journey is always a good thing, though, because yeah. if it wasn't for the journey, you wouldn't be who you are and where exactly. you are today anyway. But when I see Rob, I always see Rob dancing and being active. <laughs> so when I reach out to him for the podcast, I'm like, what is your schedule looking like? Because he looks like he is always busy, like booked and busy. So Rob today, let me, let me just... Tell you the list of things he does. <laughs> He's a flower guy at the weddings. Yeah. He's a a, a actor. Yeah. You may find him on your 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 latest Tubi movie. Pretty much. He's the governor. He's the dancer. He's the party starter. What <laughs> else? What other titles do you hold? Hats uh, do you wear? Comedian, host, um, there's just so many. Oh, Big brother. Handy guy. Oh, yeah. Hand, Gov's Handyman Services. You Make can get sure you at support them. Yeah. Get Make at sure me. you support them. Huck, I, do, I do a lot. Painting, plumbing, electric. You know. Um, and I'm very reasonable. I don't try to get over on nobody. Sometimes I tell people to give me their own price, what they feel like. Yes. Because I want, I want to bless people. I don't mm-hmm. want to hurt nobody. I want to bless them. Mm-hmm. You know. Um. But yeah, it's, it's so many things I've been, you know, when you go from a place in your life where people don't even really want you around to where people just want you around, mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm like, why are you always here? Because there are people that call me and be like, can you just show up? Mm-hmm. Just show up for a minute, you know, take the mic and make us laugh. You know, just do something. And, and you know, I do it. Where you get them dance moves from? I got no rhythm. Just, I mean, I, listen, I ain't ask you, I ain't say you had rhythm. I just asked you where you get them from. But I mean, the, 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 listen, just move your listen, feet and you I'm, just go with it. Look, y'all, <laughs> pretty much, in my mind, I got my own music right, that's right, playing. Right, It ain't going to that music. My, somebody said it. I that? actually enjoy watching it. Yeah. I don't know why, but I actually <laughs> enjoy watching it. I mean, the, the one foot over here and the other one over there and somehow, some, but I like seeing it because you know what? Is a person being in a happy place. Yes. When I see the video, I don't see this person doesn't have no damn rhythm. I see a person don't give a damn and right. they're enjoying themselves and they're enjoying life and they don't care about nothing that anybody has to say. they just doing them and they having fun doing it. So that's what I see when I see the video. So I love the video. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's real because <laughs> that's what a, lot, a lot of people say the same thing. It's like, mm-hmm. you just don't care. You, mm-hmm. just, you just enjoy life. Mm-hmm. And it ain't like, and then they'd be like, yo, man. I ain't seen a video from you. What's up? You good? Like, if they don't see me on doing a TikTok or a little video, people will really call me and be like, are you okay? We ain't seen no video. You no, know, nah, man, I just got real busy. <laughs> you right, know, I ain't get a chance right. to do it. Just like um, every year, last four years, I'll be doing the uh, beans, greens, tomato. You name it. Yeah, I do that. Say this, tomato. And yeah. I just, actually, I just posted it earlier. People is text. Oh, we should make a beans greens video. Yeah. People, people text me earlier and ask me, "Where's the where's the?" Because I normally do it a week before Thanksgiving, but I haven't done it yet. So oh I'm gonna goodness. do it tonight. It'll be on TikTok. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. The beans <laughs> greens with me. Yeah. But that's Lisa. So um, so what got you into the acting? How did that come about? Oh, I was in this. I was at this church called Yesha. Yesha Ministries. Um, and also, what else you forgot to mention is also um, a praise dance. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's what happened. I, 
it was something they was talking about and it was I forgot her name, praise dance teacher, so she taught me a dance. And I did it one Sunday. And just from there, this lady named uh, Sister Colin, she was like, you know, she's starting this acting group called Heaven Sent Ministries. And she asked me to do some acting with her. And I did it. And everybody loved it. Mm -hmm. So I just, from there, just kept going. Uh, my youngin, um, RA certified, him and Kareem, they the ones who got me on. I'm on YouTube with them, and it's a movie. It's a series called Shysters. I'm in that. Uh, what is that other one? Oh, Yo Bro. Yo Make bro. sure y'all check those two it's movies out. Shysters and Yo Bro. Yeah, they're on Tubi. And then The Ganja, which is on. No. Yo Bro and Shysters is on YouTube. Okay. Ganja is on Tubi, and then this movie Who is on Tubi. I was just talking about Who with somebody today, and it is, is a part two coming out. Yeah. So part Are you two, in part two, too? No, I'm not in part two. But you was in part one. Right. Okay. Look for him in one. those movies. Part somebody one. just requested, they said, do you travel to Pottstown? Yeah. 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 He travels to Pottstown. Yeah, Book. Just... I'm about to be his agent, yo. <laughs> I'm his agent, so all calls... Yeah. I have an appointment book. If you want to book, <laughs> if you would like to book Rob the Governor, please hit me up. I'm his new manager. It just had me here. Everybody is a first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, Pottstown. Pottstown, how far is that? That's, um, that's not too far. You yeah, about an hour. Five, five, yes. Mm -hmm. That's not I don't went down Delaware and did some work for people in Wilmington. So okay. You know, you know if, if it ain't too far, I'll travel. Okay. You know. So yeah. do people try to book you for things? As for, well, yeah. Dude, how you think I did the flower guy? Uh, that was decent. It was funny because me and one of my guys, the guy who I did, the first person I did it for, right? Oh, you did it a few times. I think yeah. I did see you do it twice. Yeah. Well, man, Hank, I had did it on TikTok. Okay. And so, well, man, Hank, he seen it. And somehow we got to tell him, I said, I'll be your flower guy. He said, yes, you are. So he told his wife and then... JB, Mumps, and Louise all talking about, so I wound up really being the flower guy. Oh, my goodness. And then a friend, another friend of mine that I grew up with, Kendra, her and her husband was watching it. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because when I was working for this company called Post, she she had her own cleaning company. So she came in, and that was the first time I met her fiance. Okay. And she was like, this one that did the flower guy. He said, well, you going to do it at my, at my way. I thought they was playing. Right. But literally, as far as the wedding started coming, they called me like, you really going to be the flower? I'm like, yeah, oh I'll do it. Oh, my goodness. I, I just, you know, it, I just like having fun. It's the free spirit. Yeah, like, I, I just love, love it. having fun. I love it. You know, if I, if I, can, if I can put a smile. My, my thing is this. If I could put a smile on one person's face a day, mm -hmm. my job was complete for that day. Absolutely. You know, and that goes, that goes along with my treatment of my disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that goes along with my treatment. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, and that's just how I just keep moving. You know? Yeah. Like, to see the kids, like, well, when I was saying about, I may not be able to do, um. Uh, Christmas. The to Santa Claus. Claus. Um, because like I said, I started going to the schools, but I just started this new job. Okay. Um, and it would fall into my, what's it called? Works probation. Okay, okay. Probation. Time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um. But I did talk to my manager, and I showed him some pictures, and he was like, when you get a little closer, I'll, I'll talk figure to you. Figure it yeah. in, try to figure yeah. it out. He said, it's something that you do, and he said, that's beautiful. So, you know, fingers crossed I'll be able to do it. Yeah. You because know? I can't, I'm not going to commit for Christmas Day because it takes me away from my family. Exactly. And I was doing it, I think I was doing Santa Claus for about six years. Mm -hmm. For the first five years, I was doing it on Christmas Day, so I was always away from my family. Mm -hmm. Like, when I say I was up at 7 out the house, literally out the house by 7, 7.30 in the morning, mm -hmm. I wasn't getting home till like, 6. Dang. You know, yeah, so my whole nice. Christmas was going, so mm -hmm. I, I, had to, I had to balance that out. So. So is there anything else that the people can look forward to seeing you? Doing, seeing you in, anything, any well, projects coming up? 
Well, I was just also in the play that uh, my cousin Kay Lattimore, I mean, <clears throat> Kay Ellaby wrote. Uh, it's called I'm Sick of This Church. Um, and also, they want us to do it again. So I, I'm not sure the date. I think she said it's sometime in March. Okay. It's going to be like the end, towards the end of March. They want that done again. Um, also, I'm in something, uh, what is it called? Y'all Drawn. That was written by a guy named Boone. Um, oh, they had a lot of Philly people in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's good. I'm, I'm in that. Uh, I'm not sure when it's coming out on Tubi. Um, so, my man, already certified. They can already start The Ganja 2. Uh, actually, we're doing finishing up with his other movies called The Ticket. So, that'll be coming out soon. Um, and what is that on Tubi as well? That's going to be on Tubi okay. as well. Um so yeah, I've got a lot of projects coming up. Uh, some other projects coming up as far as me acting. Um, it's just like I said, it's just a blessing. Anybody need a flower, man? Somebody ready to get married? Give me a call. No, no. give me a call. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm more than half the book for you. I'm the manager. <laughs> but um, tell the people how they can reach you and where they can find you at. Um, Y'all going to reach me on uh, Facebook as Robert. What is what am I on Facebook? Oh, Robert, 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 Robert SV, Gov. No, what is it? I forgot my Facebook name. I'll tag him. I'll, I'll tag him. <laughs> no, you Rob, know what? I got it. It's Robert Governor of Somerville Facebook. Uh, Holman. I'm going to be reached on, uh, what is that? IG, that's SV, Gov. And what am I on TikTok? SV, Gov. I, I, uh, Robert... Is? I'm on TikTok and I don't even be knowing my nickname sometimes. Do you have a YouTube? I, you know what? I I, I I started one, but I never finished it. So let me tell y'all what to do, people. While he's looking, <laughs> right? I always tag my people when I have stuff. So make sure you follow A, me, him on TikTok. Follow me on IG and follow me on YouTube. All my stuff is talking with Tanea. So anytime I have a guest, I definitely tag my te uh, my guest and everything. So he's still looking to find out his uh, name. Tag him. He only knows his name. He takes pictures of himself. <laughs> Here we go. That's right. On TikTok, it's called at gov of SV. Okay, that's yeah. easy to remember. Yeah. See, so I'll I'm, I'm, I'll be all over. Um, it's just I just want to share this also, uh, if you don't mind. No, go ahead. If you have someone out there, literally, that's struggling with any type of disease, uh, especially the one I was just talking about, don't give up on them. Keep praying for them. And if um, you need to reach out, you can actually call me and I can tell you different places they can go. Uh, my phone number is 267-528-9264. That's 267-528-9264. I can tell you different places where they can go and also help them get into the place. And also, if you need me to come and talk with them and uh, let them know that, you know, I can let them know where I came from. I'm not just book smart. I'm not book smart on it. I'm street smart on it because I've been there. I'm not nobody that's a therapist. And I'm a person who lived it and a person that can let them know I was once a uh, Strong. I'm trying to reach the right words. Yeah, because the censorship I, yeah. is crazy. I was once one of the people that was homeless because of my past of doing certain things, but now to where God has got me now, you know, I have my own home, I have my own car, I have a great job. I went to school for electric. Uh, I know a lot about plumbing, so I, you know, and then also not only that, I'm a family man. Uh, my children are back in my life, so you think your kids will never speak to you again? I'm here to tell you they will. You know, you just gotta give it time. You know, don't don't rush it. You just gotta give it time. I took my kids. It took us about three years before we all really got connected again. Mm -hmm. And last year, for the first time, I was only able to take one of them. I went on the po went to the Poconos, mm -hmm. and my youngest daughter. Now my youngest daughter is 25 now. For the first time in 23 years, we woke up under the same roof for Christmas. Oh. Yeah, so when I tell y'all things can happen, mm -hmm. I'm living proof. This is nothing made up. I'm living proof. 
you know, so. Yeah, my sis said um, she's Troy. Do you know Troy Jones? Troy, Troy Jones. Yeah. Yeah, he was murdered, but that's yeah. what my sis said. She's his sister. Oh, okay. So to tell you hi. Hey, so, how you doing? So, yes, everyone, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, indeed. Um, with God, any and everything is possible, as we know that. Um, and I really, I really, really, really appreciate you coming here. I really appreciate you being open. Oh, I yes. appreciate you being transparent. I just appreciate you sharing your story with us because you didn't have to do it. True. And not only did you do it like, you know, the one-to-one -one with me, you did it in front of viewers as well. And I appreciate that because it's going to help somebody. I promise right. you it's going to help somebody. Oh, yeah. I know because see, one thing I know, a lot of people try to hide what they've been through because they're ashamed. You can't be ashamed of something. I mean, you can be ashamed, but you got to remember when God brings you out of it, mm -hmm. you got to share his light and his glory. Right. You know, so that is shame being ashamed of something. You got to let that go out the window and be grateful for where God has brought you from today. Absolutely. You know, so that's why I'm like I said, I'm an open book. I'll talk about my story. Yes, you can see it all over the book. I don't I don't care. I'll mm -hmm. tell different pieces because um I want to help somebody. And I really didn't even know until I saw you sharing a part of your story. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole thing about my podcast. I want us to have the uncomfortable conversations that mm -hmm. need to be had. Yes. Because if we don't have the conversations, we're never gonna fix the problems. Right. So I just feel like, you know, you just sometimes it just takes the right person to have the conversation. Yeah. So you know, yeah, people don't have to people don't have to be afraid. And then, you know, and I and I thank y'all for this podcast. And also a friend of mine I forgot the name. Oh, they won't kill me. Philly Uncut. Philly Uncut, my man EA. Um Oh man, it was my man Rob and his wife. It was something Philly. They got a podcast. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I said this to a friend of mine. I'm like, you know, I see all these podcasts with the celebrities and all that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to start nothing. But No, you're not starting nothing. What's the violation what name? What do now? <laughs> They're just trying to say we violate and stuff. We didn't violate anything. I don't know. Go ahead. I'm listening. Um. Oh, personal information. The phone number. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um. I see all these other podcasters, right? They talk about a lot of different things. But even like the talk shows, like, right. how come y'all don't have nobody on there talking about the the, 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 the disease? Mm -hmm. You know, because there's people out there that need help. Mm -hmm. How come you don't have nobody out there talking about that, you know? And not only that, when I... All right, so I, t I talk about church, right? Right. And when I talk about going to church, right, I don't... I like ratchet pastors. Yeah. Because I'm ratchet a little right. bit sometimes. And I don't want somebody who always walked the straight line and they always mm -hmm. did the right thing and made the best choices. That person is not going to touch me as much as a person who's been through some things. Right. So when a person is relatable, I hear them clearly. I hear them more because they're relatable opposed to you should turn left and turn right and mm -hmm. up, go up. And I hear, oh, shoot, I made a wrong turn. And then I had to go back, go around, loop around. That's me. Right. That that's relatable to me. And that's my pastor. My mm -hmm. pastor, my mm -hmm. pastor. I gotta say, Pastor Larry Stevens, right? Down in Delaware. That's where I go to church at. Mm -hmm. right? New life. Yeah, new life. He give me pastor on me, but he's ratchet. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pastor. We but, like ratchet pastors. But he's a, he's that good type of thing. Like mm -hmm. it's like what he talk about. He don't say what I used. to. He don't say, I could have been this. He says, I did this. Mm -hmm. And this is where God has brought me to. Exactly. So when he lets you know what he did, mm -hmm. he ain't like, you know, not coming at some of these preachers, but it ain't, oh, I could have been doing this. I could have been doing that. But, you know, because of the Lord, you know, he's one of those pastors that's like, I did this and I can relate to it because you're exactly. helping me grow constantly. I don't give a fuck. Pastor Waller is one of them too. He, yes. I love him. I love him. They, them too. I Let love him. Let me tell you, I was. Oh wait a minute. I'm sorry, Bishop Robinson. <laughs> love these men. Bishop started my journey. Mm -hmm. I started with my aviation ministry. Mm -hmm. He started the, the the recreation of me, mm -hmm. right? The reincarnation. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. reincarnation. And as that went time, 
I wound up, because of the work schedule, I wound up going to Enon. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I wound up going down Delaware to New Life. Mm -hmm. um, so with these three men, these spiritual men, I got three spiritual fathers. Mm -hmm. I can call any of them. Well, I can't reach Pastor Wild all the time. But I can reach Bishop. I can reach Pastor Larry Stevens, you know. Right. Not only that. Former state rep Steve Kinsey, uh, Councilwoman Cindy Bass. Yes. I just heard of her. <laughs> I just heard. Yes, that these when I say uh, I state, hear good things about her. Just to let you know, I hear good yes, things about her. State rep uh, Theresa Parker, uh, Senator Street. I got all these few phone numbers on my phone, mm -hmm. and if I call one of them mm -hmm. and say, "Hey, I'm." going through or I need some help with a project or I need some donations for to help the kids mm -hmm. they are all right there that's good to know you know so uh, for people that say they're they not doing this they're not no I know when I call them mm -hmm. some of the toys and stuff and the Easter egg hunts and the Halloween giveaways the trunk or treats Councilwoman Cindy Bass uh, State Rep uh, Theresa Parker, State Rep, um, Kenzie, uh, Senator Street, these people, donations from their company. Or even um, starting to get to know uh, State Rep Anthony Bellman. He's a young guy. I know, listen, and he's for Union. So I met yes. him, and he, it, it's crazy because you need to learn these people, y'all. Y'all mm -hmm. y'all need to, because everybody swear that the presidential um, election is so important. But they don't know. Hold on, let me just fix this because now we have to let them know that we're still here. Thank you, TikTok. You really got me working today. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, a lot of people really need to know that these uh, these governors and senators and, you know, mayors, that's the more important elections, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. Like everybody goes to run to the polls for the presidential election, but... We lost before we got there because we were supposed to have been voting. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to vote for the things that touch you locally, that affect your kids locally, the judges and all that other kind of stuff. That stuff direct, that stuff affects you directly. But um, back to uh, Cindy Bass, I've been hearing is her, is her name mm -hmm. Cindy Bass? I've been hearing her name a lot recently. Yes. A lot. And I'm like, okay, that's a good sign because every time I hear her name, it's always in a positive manner. Right. Um, another person that's coming on the show, he actually works with her too. Okay. So I can't wait to have him in the show, on the show as well because he works like close with her. So I got some good stuff coming up, y'all, like right. some good people. And that's what I try to do. I try to stick to people who you might see every day. Like I know a couple of some celebrities. Yeah. I know a couple, <laughs> but I want to get people that you'll see at your market at your this and they won't, Hey, you know, they'll say hi to you. They won't be acting all funny, you know, but, um, it's all about community, y'all, and it's about the kids. Mm -hmm. So we just gotta work together and make this world yeah. a better place. And we got a new guy, uh, cause um, state rep Kenzie, he retired. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a new. He's a young guy. His name uh, Andre. He's just state rep. He came around to one of the big cookouts and mm -hmm. saw everybody get to know him. He's and, a nice guy. He's yeah. um he actually he grew up in unions. He he came to the union mm -hmm. hall one day, eleven ninety nine C. He came here one okay. day and he was talking to everyone and he's friends with one of my um family okay. members. So he is he's young and he's active. And I know sometimes, you know, older people, us we see these young people in these positions, but give them a chance. Yes. Because they got the energy, they got the, they got the, they, they, they hungry. They mm -hmm. wanna, they wanna prove something. And sometimes you just gotta pass the charge. You gotta, you gotta let them. You gotta you pass the charge. Give them a torch. chance. Stop mm -hmm. knocking them before you give them a chance. And I can't forget one more person. Uh, I watched him. He just got back into. I want to think. I think he got became. Hold on. What was uh Cheryl Parker at one time? Councilwoman or state rep? Mm -hmm. I forgot. But whatever she was, he took her spot up in Wisworth. Mm -hmm. And Anthony Phillips, that's his name. And mm -hmm. he's uh he brought him back to Wisworth Street mm -hmm. Community Day. Mm -hmm. And so you know, there's a lot of these politicians that are doing what they can, you know, um before y'all decide to knock them and because you hear what other people say, get to know them. Mm -hmm. 
Somebody just going back on the comment. Somebody said Pastor Walla and E9 is hood and I love it. That's it. That, where you at? Whoever what? said it, you're that was, right. That was like some theory. <laughs> but let me tell you why I like Pastor Walla, right? At first I thought I was gonna be turned off by a big church, whatever. I do watch it online sometimes. Yeah. But I'm I used to be the number one they used to call me Wanda. I used to go to everybody's funeral. I done got saved a million and one times. I probably, but I needed it. I needed it every time right. I went. I needed it. So I get saved at everybody's funeral. I'm the person who holds your hand up and stand up. I'm that person at everybody's funeral. So if you ever see it, don't be surprised. It's me again. Like, But um, I went to a service um, that he um, was preaching at. It was a funeral. And when I tell you, you know, he put out the word. And then it was like, okay, you heard the word. And then he went back and he made you understand the word. Exactly. Like He's like, did y'all hear what I said? So he was saying something about like um, when he was a young boy, you know, his dad gave him a bang, bang, whatever, whatever. And he was like, um, what y'all don't understand? I said I was a boy with a toy, but now I was a man with the And the way he just put it together, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, exactly. I get it. Uh -huh. So it just was like it, it, it's a good feeling. Like when I tell you, I went to this particular person um, funeral with a Muslim sister. Right. When I tell you that girl was standing up just as much as me. Okay, she mm -hmm. might have been high look because we was both standing up at the same time. Right. Like the feeling was a good. Like I'm telling you, I mean he he's awesome. Yeah, awesome. Fast, fast of all is definitely awesome. Awesome you know, and relatable. And, and he's very relatable. Uh, you know, just just uh, again. Uh, you know, he has a real big church, and like I said, this, that that connection with him, I didn't really have that much of a connection with him. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, you know, when I do need to speak with him, I'm able to get through to him because of all the, thank God, because of all the people that I do know mm -hmm. and get me in contact with him. Um, but Pat, my, my um, Bishop Robinson, Hood, he would tell you, I'll put the mic down, we can fight now. Oh. That's like... The, but when he say I put the mic down, we can fight now. He's talking like, listen, I'm gonna fight this enemy for uh -huh. you. Um, and again, like I was saying about Pastor Stevens, oh my God, just same way, you know, hood in a good way, right? You know, ratchet in a good way, where he's gonna give you the word, then he's gonna break it down and tell you what he yes. understand, you know. It's so, a breakdown. Yes, and just a shout out to like my whole entire family. For just, I'm not gonna name your names because I didn't forget nobody. So when I say my whole entire, that means each and every one of y'all, I need to really thank y'all for the continuous support that y'all give me, uh, that y'all, the push that y'all continue to give me, um, everything, you know, I just thank you, you know. So, and my friends, I cannot forget my, my friends, uh, from the males to the females. You know, a lot of, you see a lot of me, a lot of people are like, this is my sister, this one. That's how we act towards each other, and that's how they always push me in. And they have my back support. They push me in the down. But, but to my my five, six, mm -hmm. my six horsemen, that's what they call us. Mm -hmm. Gil, Pig, Mark, well, we call Mark Smooth. Gil, Pig, Smooth, uh, Little Gil. Okay. All right, Polk. I know I hear you. Polk gonna say, "Man, you didn't say my name." So, <laughs> Polk was all the man, but yeah, Shannon, uh, Big Ron. Terry said she's so glad to see you, Rob. I'm glad to. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're glad to see me because I can't see you. Seeing I'm a show. I'm so, a show. <laughs> so I, I can't see you seeing me, but I can see you because I know it's not this plan. See, that's about it's just like having fun. Okay, so again, if you would like to book Rob for any <laughs> weddings, any Christmas events, and any dancing programs, whatever, give me a call, and I will definitely link you up, and I will book you. Yes, and you can look me up at SVGov on IG, mm -hmm. Robert Governor of uh, Somerville Facebook on Facebook, and what is that? Uh, Gov of SV on TikTok. All right, y'all. Thank y'all. It's been real. Appreciate y'all.